Islamic Jeddah do not um, listen to the uh, ceasefire and continue firing, the um, IDF will take action. This is what was decided this afternoon. And the Air Force uh, bombed many targets in Gaza, and this will continue. Hamas have decided to continue and will pay for the price on that decision. And you must remember that Egypt, which, by the way, is very critical of Hamas, both at a popular level and in government and media circles, brought forward this idea of peace, which Israel observed for, what, five hours or so. In that five-hour period, Hamas kept firing rockets. All those people out there, I know some are watching, who really think all of this is the fault of Israel because they're better at defending themselves than Hamas. And, and there, are, there are bunkers in Gaza. It's where the, the, the leaders of Hamas hide, so people aren't allowed to, to go in there. But there was peace. There was a possibility, the potential for peace. And one side said, no, we don't want to know about it. We want to carry on with war. Hmm. DJ Schneeweiss, Consulate General uh, of Israel in Toronto and Western Canada. So that's everything from Toronto right to, to, to the West Coast. Um, when, when we met today, I, I said, no special protection? And you said, no. I, I think therein lies a the tale. People aren't that anti-Israel. We might have the, the, you know, the screamers at the protests and a few left-wing newspapers, but I think most people, Canadian, German, French, British, and whatever, they say, you know what, I can see that Israel has to defend itself. I think you're absolutely right, Michael. In terms of the need, our need for protection, Hamas is the great example of it at the moment. There is a lot of hostility to Israel that is voiced and, and, and expressed through violence, but it comes from a small amount of people. Mm. Uh, if we look around the West, uh, you, you, again, your, your radical extremists will get the attention, will, will, will you know, take actions that will uh, uh, get some media coverage. But across Canada, the, the work that we do here in Canada, the, all we encounter is openness and willingness to work with us to build better relationships for Israel and Canada, which benefit both sides. So, yeah, yeah I, I, think, I think you're right. And the, the people that we talk to here about this conflict at the moment, I think, again, almost across the board, understand that you have a very simple situation here where uh, one side, while we are the strongest side, but we are the ones who are being, uh, uh, who are being attacked. Mm. It is Hamas aggression. It's Hamas, Hamas indiscriminate uh, uh, targeting of civilians, and we have a right to defend ourselves. And I think most people accept that and mm. see it. I think we have to talk about end games here because people should ask the question: Why is Hamas doing this now? Any war with Israel in in, in the region, uh, Hamas or Hez I mean, I, I was there when the Hezbollah was being fought. Um, they were relatively successful, but they still lost enormous numbers because Israel is going to win. But what, what do Hamas want? Um, the three Israeli kids were killed. The rockets have been coming in. Israel withdrew from Gaza. I was in Israel when that was going on. When Israel, there were many Israelis who were passionately opposed to that. Do not withdraw from Gaza. I don't think that Israelis want to start dancing and hugging with Palestinians and we're all in love with each other. They just want to coexist. They, maybe they can't stand the sight of each other, but just coexist. They got out of Gaza. They were willing to help Gaza financially. As soon as they left, the violence started. What do Hamas want? To be honest... The ultimate goal of Hamas is well known it's in their charter and it's in just about every statement. There was another statement coming out of Gaza this morning saying we will not end until every Zionist is gone. That means from, Jew. From everywhere. And, well, yeah, saying, for them it's one and the same thing. The Hamas charter is entirely anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm. But they believe in the eradication of the state of Israel, its annihilation, the removal of any Jewish presence in the Holy Land. Okay? We're not good. It's not going to happen. Yeah. But that's their ultimate goal. What their, if you like, more strategic goal in the current context is I believe, is to salvage their own status vis in international opinion and vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the other extremist organizations with whom they have to uh, deal with mm. inside Gaza and vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinian Authority. Their, their only modus operandi is violence and hatred. And when the violence and hatred is being outflanked or being ignored, or, or where, and where they're not able to, uh, what's the word, to infuse their capacities with more rockets and more and, and more ability to provide civil services, you know, what do you call civilian services to their own people? Then they're then they're at a loss. They've lost money from the Arab world. Egypt has cut off the the ability of their, uh, their ability to import rockets into into Gaza mm -hmm. through the tunnels. Uh, the uh, Palestinian Authority is trying to reassert uh, its authority in Gaza or through this internet through this unity deal. Hamas realise that they're actually in a weaker position. They're trying to re, re you know restack the deck again. More civilian loss from their point of view is victory. 
more civilian loss means they become the you know the heroes because they're fighting about back. that because whenever, whenever yeah. I say something like this I'm accused you're, you're a racist you're saying that these people don't care about their own look I go on what I've seen I spent a lot of time in in the region uh, in Syria Arab Muslim will slaughter Arab Muslim with such blithe alacrity I mean they're almost dancing sometimes literally dancing in, in the blood of their victims there was a, an Arab leader who said, we will win because uh, the, the Jews love life and, and we love death. There, there is this, this obsession with, with martyrdom and death that does infect some of the Arab Muslim world. Yeah, there are Hamas leaders who will say, use innocent people as human shields. That's not a matter of opinion, that's a matter of fact. Yeah, and, whether, and the fact that there are Hamas leaders doing it doesn't mean every Muslim or every Arab... Of course not. Of course not. So it's not racist. It's looking at the specifics of this circumstance. The Hamas leadership is hiding behind its own civilians. It's hiding its rockets behind its own civilians. And it actually seeks the civilian damage, the civilian casualties, in order to uh, win the propaganda war that it is... Uh, that it is uh, uh, um, maintaining against mm -hmm. Israel. Mm -hmm. Without those propaganda victories, it has nothing. It doesn't offer any hope to its people. It doesn't offer economic benefit. It doesn't offer the coexistence that you spoke of before. All it offers is con constant conflict and hostility. Okay. And so, it, and, and again, its, its objective is to bring Israel down, not to bring the Palestinians up. Mm -hmm. and, and you bring Israel down by making Israel look bad, by, by making Israel kill civilians, by making mm -hmm. Israel Caught, get Israel caught up in a conflict. If they would only turn the story around, if they were in the business of trying to build up the Palestinian people instead of trying to bring us down, then, then the entire conflict would look different and the entire you know, right. sort of end game would be very different okay. as well. Appreciate the time. We'll certainly have you back. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.